Hi guys, welcome to episode 2, part 3 of Restoration for Beginners, Datsun 280Z project. In this episode, we're going to show you how you can upgrade or restore the front disc brakes on your S30 Datsun. This part 3 of the episode will serve as the installation guide, where we'll show you all the details of putting the cleaned and new front disc brakes back together on the car. Check out the video description section to navigate to the part that interests you. If you haven't already, please check out episode 2 part 1 if you're wondering what parts I'm going to be using, um, wondering about cost estimates, or if you want just a quick 101 of the key components of the braking system. Check out part 2 if you're interested in learning how to take the old parts off the car and cleaning them, prepping them as needed. I have a 280Z. I have a 280Z here as my project car, but this should be relevant for the earlier 240Zs, 260Zs, and the later 280Z X Datsuns as well. Now that all the old braking parts have been taken off the car and cleaned, let's finally move to the installation portion of the project. The wheel hubs that I'm using are taken off the car and they have been coated with some de-rusting solution, but I guess it doesn't exactly look pristine. First thing that we're going to do is uh, put some anti-seize on the wheel hub to rotor contact surfaces. From the last video, you saw that it took a fair amount of pounding to get the old rotors off the wheel hubs. The anti-seize prevents the sticking of the two parts so that you'll have an easier time taking them apart next time you have to. We're going to take out our brand new StopTech slotted and drilled rotor from its box. It's the same size as the stock ones, so no modification is really needed. Lay down the rotor carefully onto the wheel hub and make sure to align the bolt holes. We're going to take out the rotor bolts that we let sit in the de-rusting solution and make sure you don't forget the washer as well. We'll dry them with a microfiber towel. But before we install the bolts and the washers back into the wheel hub, let's put some thread lockers on the bolt thread so the bolt doesn't come loose with the vibration of the car. I'm using Loctite Blue thread locker, which is strong enough to use on braking components, but not so strong that it's permanent. It's generally a good idea to use lock, um, thread lockers on braking component bolts. Always hand tighten the bolts or nuts before you use a wrench or a power tool. This eliminates the chance that you'll misalign the bolt and ruin the threads. Now we'll use a wrench to tighten the bolts down a bit further. Now I'm going to do something that I generally recommend against, using a power tool to tighten down the bolts. You really want to use a torque wrench to tighten down a bolt to a specific torque rating, but I'm using a drill here because I know my drill is set to tighten to roughly around 30 foot pounds of torque before slipping. And it was difficult to use a torque wrench on this wheel hub while it was free to move around. I forgot to film it, but I did later use a torque wrench to tighten these bolts down to 35 foot pounds of torque, which is specified in the factory service manual. And there you have it. That's how you install your rotors back onto the wheel hubs. Now let's reinstall the dust shield back onto the steering knuckle. If you remember, I took this off even though I didn't have to, just to give it a good cleaning. Um, I also had a chance to paint it black so that it looks a little bit nicer. There's nothing complicated here, uh, just carefully tighten the screws back with a screwdriver, and uh, that's it. The factory service manual actually did uh, specify that you torque it down to 3 foot pounds of torque, but I don't think you have to be too exact here. Now let's reinstall the wheel hub. When we took this off, the grease was very dirty, so I actually went ahead and bought new bearing sets, and you're now watching me repack it with fresh grease. 
I'm going to speed through this part because I have a separate set of videos that are dedicated to showing you how to replace your front wheel bearings, and that'll take you through all of this in detail step by step. Since this episode is more focused on braking components, uh, we'll speed through this. We're now going to reinstall our new calipers to the wheel hub assembly. I went ahead and uh, painted it blue to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, if you're interested in learning how to paint your calipers properly, I have a separate video showing you how as well. I'm using Loctite blue thread lockers on the caliper bolts because you definitely do not want them coming loose. We're now going to put the caliper back onto the steering knuckle and align the bolt holes. Really important note here, make sure that the bleeder valve is on the top, not the bottom. If the, if the bleeder valve is at the bottom, you're installing that caliper to the wrong side. Make sure to check because the caliper actually will fit on either side. Ask me how I know that. Now that one of the bolts is holding it in place, we're going to install or screw in the other bolt. Sorry, my head's in the way. Again, I'm just going to hand tighten these bolts as much as I can. Now I'm going to use a wrench to tighten it a little bit further. Just tighten them enough so that they don't move very easily. To finish this up, we're going to use our torque wrench to tighten the bolts down to 70 foot-pounds of torque. We'll use our 10mm flare nut wrench to reconnect the brake line back to the caliper. Again, this point is worth repeating. Always use a flare nut wrench on brake lines. These brake line fasteners are really easy to strip, and it's a pain to fix if you strip them with a regular wrench or vice grip. And there you have it. We're done with the installation of our new calipers. Now let's wrap up by installing our new brake pads. I have StopTech's Street Performance Semi Metallic Pads that should be a nice improvement over the ceramic pads that were installed uh, on this 280Z. This part of the installation is fairly straightforward. Slide in the pads into the caliper. Two pads will go in each caliper. Use a set of pliers to roughly align the pin holes. Slide one of the pins in. And install the brake pad retainer clips. You might have to jiggle them around a little bit to get them to uh, seat properly. Now let's slide in the, the second pin. Again, use your ply here 
to make sure that it goes through properly and that the pin goes over the, the brake pad retainer clip. Now I'm rotating the pins so that I can easily see the tiny retaining clip holes that are on the pins. Now push in the pin retaining clips which uh, is basically keeps the pins from falling out of the calipers. Now that all the hardware has been uh, installed into this brake caliper, we are now done with um, our restoration. Even though now you're done with the installation, you're not quite ready to drive off yet. You first will need to bleed your brake lines of all the air bubbles we've introduced into the system when we took it apart. I'll make a separate video on how you can do that on your S30 Datsun. You will also need to follow the proper brake-in procedure after installing new rotors and brake pads. Your brakes won't work to their full potential until the pads and rotors have been properly mated and broken in. Now, it's not absolutely mandatory, so if you decide not to do this, just know that you won't have great braking performance for the first couple of hundred miles, and that's perfectly natural. If you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing to this channel. Um, I'll be aiming to tackle a new project every week. See you guys next time.